ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم so the third revelation and nuzul al-thalith the third revelation the third, the third phase of revelation was changing these words into the meanings translating the words into the reality into the human actions that was how we can say the third phase of revelation which is yet to accomplished and uh, as far as this life of qadr is concerned if you remember one of the meanings we said it's destiny and there i also discussed that we need to dis- i will just later on discuss it at length what does the destiny mean there is a surah in the beginning of surah ad-dukhan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the beginning of surah ad-dukhan ha mim is huruf muqatta'at its true meaning is best known to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is preponderant opinion about all huruf muqatta'at there are certain separated letters there are certain separated letters in the quran in the beginning of the surah in the beginning of the chapters almost 17 in number uh, so like ha mim ya sin ta ha alif la mim ha ain sa ain sin qaf ka fa ya ain sa so these are different huruf muqattaat so this surah al dukhan also starts with huruf muqattaat ha mim uh, by the clear book we reveal the quran during a blessed night inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah So another uh, uh, attribute and characteristic of this night is mentioned Laylatul Mubarakah is a blessed night indeed fiha yufraku kull amrin hakim indeed we have always forewarned human kind on that night every wise decree every wise decree fiha yufraku kull amrin hakim amr hakim means wise decree on that night every wise decree is specified by our command surely we have always been sending messengers as a mercy from our lord indeed he is the all hearing all knowing so surah ad-dukhan chapter 44 verse number 1 to 6 so in this verse in the surah ad-dukhan the laylatul qadr is also uh, referred to as laylatul mubarakah though there is also a shah's opinion that this refers to the 15th night of shaaban 15th 9th of shaaban uh, but uh, the preponderant opinion majority opinion is that it's about uh, about the laylatul qadr inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah because quran clearly mentions inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr so laylatul qadr is now being defined by surah ad-dukhan it is laylatul mubarakah or we can say this laylatul mubarak is further being classified by surah al qadr that this laylatul mubarak this blessed night is the night of qadr the night of uh, power one thing quran mentions here fiha ruf yufraku kullu amrin hakim in this night what happens yufraku kullu amrin hakim every wise decree is specified what what does this wise decree mean what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees in this night so this passage for this statement elucidates the significance of laylatul qadr as the night during which the fates destinies and decrees are sent down for the forthcoming year uh, one of the famous commentator of the quran that is uh, shahabuddin abu thana shahabuddin alusi rahimahullah is considered among the best commentators of the quran among the later generations among the mutaakhirin uh, and uh, this shahabuddin alushi in his ruhul maani it is in 32 volumes the tafsir is 32 volumes it's a beautiful tafsir it discusses the lugha the rhetorics the fasaha the balaga the law the sharia and many things are discussed uh, uh, in this tafsir and uh, he notes that in, uh, that uh, on that night he mentions in this tafsir every hakim decree or every 
wise decree. Fiha yufruku kullu amrin hakim, which Allah mentions about Israel to Qadr, Laylatul Mubaraka, that uh, every wise decree is specified in this night. And he says every hakim is specified. One of the meanings of hakim is muhkam. Imam Alusi says one of the meaning of hakim is muhkam, means decisive, which entails that uh, this decree cannot be changed after a descent in contrast to before that. So it means in this night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides the destinies, the decrees and the fates of the people. Now the here question is, if taqdeer is already known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if taqdeer is already written as Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam, in one of the hadiths, Rufiyat uh, al wa Jaffat al-Suhuf the pens have been removed away and the ink has dried means whatever is going to happen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written it in the love mahfuz now the question is Quran says Fiha amrin hakim, that in this night in this blessed night every wise decree is being specified so the question here is uh, what type of taqdeer what type of destiny is being changed when the destiny is already fixed Actually, we need to understand the concept of destiny here. That is a, a provisional and permanent decree. There are two types of qada, two types of taqdeer, two types of destiny or predestination. One is provisional and other is pro permanent. Simple example, a person is brought to the court of law. In the court of law, now judge is supposed to just award the punishment. Before he awards his punishment, criminal is making a lot of prayer, a lot of supplications because he thinks that at this point, until it is written, there is possibility that uh, that judge may change his mind or he may give that the quantum of punishment is uh, it is deflated. Uh, he will get a light punishment rather to get a severe punishment. But once judge passes the decree, once it is written, then uh, a person can, uh, there is no way escape now. Likewise, there are two kinds of qada. One is provisional, other is permanent. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the uh, this qada is concerned, there are two types. One is al qada al muallaq. Second is al qada al mubaram. Hafiz ibn Ajr. Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani rahimahullah. Uh, he notes that the difference between these two qada, that is al qada al mubaram and al qada al muallaq. Al qada al mubaram means the permanent decree. Al qada al muallaq means provisional decree. And Hafiz ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he says, he mentions that the difference between the provisional decree and the that is al qada al muallaq which God has given to angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this type, this, this type of qada to the angels. And the permanent decree or uh, al-qada al-mubaram, which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the recording of one's fate, which the angels possess can be subject to change. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, at another place in the Quran, in chapter 13, verse number 39, Yamhu Allah, uh, ma yasha wa yusbit. Ma yasha wa yusbit. Wa God erases, removes, God erases and confirms what he wills. Yamhullah, whatever command, whatever thing he wants to erase, he can erase. And confirms whatever he wants to confirm and he can confirm it. So it means that one part of the qada is, which is fixed, there is no change in it. Then there is another part of qada which is changeable, which is subject to change. And that part is given to, in, into the custody of the angels. So in this blessed night, what Ibn, Ibn Hajar says, Rahimahullah, so al-qada al-mu'allak is subject to change. And it is in this context, we can understand the prophetic hadith sallallahu ta'ala wasallam, that prophet said sallallahu ta'ala wasallam, la yuraddu al-qada. Illa bid dua. Qada, destiny can never be changed except by dua. So which part of qada this is? It's not qada al mubram That's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's known in his eternal knowledge. That's known to his eternal 
everlasting knowledge. But here the Prophet ﷺ is discussing about Al-Qada Al-Mu'allak, the provisional decree, which is given into the custody of the angels, which is subject to change, depending upon the dua of a person. So if a person makes dua, and uh, so this provisional taqdeer, it is specified every year in the month, in, in the night of this Qadr. It is specified in the night of Qadr or in the light in Laylatul Qadr. That's what Quran says, Fiha Yufrakukullu Amrin Hakim. In this night, every wise decree is being specified. A decisive decree is being specified. So it means after the angels write down it, so after the next year there can be no change. So if a person makes a lot of dua, that's why Prophet taught our mother Aisha Radilanha. When our mother Aisha Radilana asked Ya Rasulullah sallallahu if I find uh, the Laylatul Qadr, which dua I should ask? Uh, <coughs> Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught her that when you find the Laylatul Qadr, you should excessively ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma innaka afuun, tuhibbul affa, fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are afu, you are the one who most forgiving, so you forgive me all my sins. If, if there is another hadith in which Prophet is also the authentic hadith, when a person is born, when he is in the womb of the mother, at the fourth month, angel comes and he blows into the into the flush, this lump of clay, lump of flush. Then the spirit is infused, soul is infused into it. And then four things are also decided there. His lifespan is decided, his risk is decided, whether he is good or bad is decided. So if, if, if risk, risk is decided, life is decided, whether he's good or bad is decided. So these are four things are decided there. Now the question here is, if it is already decided there, then what is subject to change? Actually, that is to call, that is that what Prophet is actually Al-Qadha Al-Mubaram. That is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody knows about it. That's why some ulama, they, they make it to, to, to simplify this. Actually, they say, if this Qadha al-Mubaram is also this Qadha al-Mu'allak, which is subject to change, is also in the in the Al-Qadha al-Mubaram, in the permanent decree, it is already mentioned that, which is also known to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala beforehand, that my servant will make du'a, and then by the source of this du'a, I am going to change his, his destiny. And that's also mentioned there. Since there's no any human person or any creature who has access to that particular uh, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what uh, Imam Abu Jafar al-Tahawi says, Rahimahullah, al-ilmu ilman, there are two types of knowledge. Ilmun fil khalki mafkud. One is inaccessible in all the creation. Nobody can have access to it. Well, ilmul mawjood, and then there is accessible knowledge. So one is al-ilmul mafkud, one ilmul mawjood, accessible knowledge, inaccessible knowledge. Accessible knowledge is what we are supposed to do. We have access to. We ask Allah has commands. You make dua. I mean, I change your destiny. So this accessible is this is known to us. Then there is inaccessible knowledge, al-ilmul mafkud, which is not known to any human being, including all the prophets. It's, just, it's only specifically exclu exclusively known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is Al-Qadha Al-Mubaram, the permanent uh, decree, which is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means it's, which is inaccessible. Whatever is inaccessible, it is ununderstandable. So whatever is ununderstandable, if we try to understand it, there will be errors. That's why if any person, you see any person trying to understand these aspects of the taqdeer, he gets confused. Because it is beyond his programming. Our mind has a specific programming to understand certain aspects of our existence, of the knowledge. If we try to cross those limits, then there will be errors, there will be confusions. It's on the basis of this thing Prophet has forbidden the Ummah not to think about the issues of the taqdeer, because that is un inaccessible to us. The, our formatting, our programming is not capable to think about it. So our, our understanding is limited, our knowledge is limited, and our programming has set in such a way we can only think about the Al-Qadha Al-Mu'allak, the provisional decree, which is subject to the change. That's why, actually, why Allah put this, uh, so that we always get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
we always ask Allah, Allah, you protect us. Ya Allah, you remove all the difficulties from us. Ya Allah, we, I need your help. Actually, this is, this is the way Allah wants to get his servants connected to him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has made this thing flexible over here. Okay, in this night, I'm going to change your destiny. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get connected to Allah. Ask him whatever you want. So angels are there to write it down. So it's not just one day, once they write down and it's fixed. No, it's fixed only up to one year. Then in next uh, Laylatul Qadr, again, Al Qadr Al Mubarak is there. But Al Qadr Al Mu'allak is subject to change, which is accessible to you as well, which you can also understand that if you face hardship in the life, if you need any good thing in the life, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Amr ibn Khattab anhu. Once he discussed about Al Qada Al Mubaram, the permanent provision, the permanent decree, the permanent destiny. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if everything is decided, then what is the fun of about doing good or bad deeds? Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You should not think like this. Then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is the actions of a person which will determine his course of destiny. It is the actions and deeds of a person, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is the deeds of a person which will determine the course of destiny of a person. If his amal are good, so it means that his destiny is good. He is following the footsteps of his destiny. If he is doing bad, so he is following the footstep of, of, of his destiny. And however, there is one thing that is irada. Irada means uh, our own will power. Allah has blessed us with the will. So one is inaccessible knowledge Allah knows beforehand as the teacher knows in the classroom that whichever is intelligent whoever is uh, every student whoever is backbencher it is known to the teacher but results are not declared on the basis of teachers assessment about the students every student is given the chance to prove his worth to his prove his metal in the examination so syllabus is same Teachers are arranged at the same level, same classroom is given to all students, same timeline is given to for all the students. It's not the intelligent students are given more time and the dull students are not given such time. So everything is ensured that it's all equal for all. What, what matters now? The will of the students, the choice of the students. Though the teacher knows who will, who will, who will get the distinction, who will have the grade A, who will have the grade B, who will have the grade C. It is all known to the teacher, but the assessment is not, the, the, the results are not declared on the basis of his assessment. Rather, the results are made uh, that each and everyone is given the cho choice and chance. So this choice and chance is what we are facing now. Allah knows, it is known to Allah that who is going to hell and who is going to heaven. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this decision, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows beforehand what is the destiny of the humanity. But to give chance to every person so that on the day of judgment he will not say, Allah, you have done injustice against me. I was supposed to go to the Jannah, but you sent me to the Jahannam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this examination hall. Then he sent the teachers as messengers. And he gave the timeline to all. And the willpower to all. Yes, you have this capability. It is up to you, Imma Shakira wa Imma Kufura. I give you potential, I give you power. I give you energy, I give you intellect. I give you the sense of understanding the things. Now, Imma Shakira wa Imma Kufura. It's up to you now. Which path you adopt, which path you tread, it's up to you. So, that's the concept of Al Qada and Al Qada Al Mubaram and Al Qada Al Mu'allak. So, as far as Al Qada Al Mubaram is concerned, that is inaccessible knowledge. That is I simply just example is the, the knowledge of the teacher about the students. Then there is Al Qada Al Mu'allak. It's quite possible that as far as the teacher is concerned, his knowledge is uh, quite limited as well. But it's quite possible that the students they may improve themselves. So the chance of improvement is there. That's Al Qada Al Mu'allak. Though that's also known to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's not like the Mu'tazila. They say it is not known to Allah. So we say when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ali. Ali means the one who has a complete knowledge of all his servants. If they believe in Aqidatul Bada, Shia and Mu'tazila, they say certain things happen 
<coughs> Allah knows about certain things only when they, those things happen. Before the actual occurrence of those events, Allah doesn't know about them. But we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what happened, what is happening, what, what, what will happen until the infinity is all in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, what type of God he is that he is not knowing that something is going to happen. So this, the, the distinction between the Qada al-Mubaram and Qada al-Mu'allak, which the Hafiz ibn Hajar rahimahullah also mentions, this classification of Qada. It's actually so that there is no hopelessness in us. Actually, it gives us a hope. It infuses a new spirit into us that we should not be hopeless. We should not be disappointed of the mercy of Allah. We should never be despaired of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there are many chances for us that we can return to Allah. Every year, every passing year, why every every year, this blessed night we are supposed to observe. That in every night we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I ask you to change my destiny towards the good in this year. And if a person's dua is so sincere, Allah will accept it. And you see, the previous life, it was something, uh, in a way we can say, away from Allah. And this year, it's close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Depending upon, I also always say, depending upon the, the strong desire in the heart. What we truly desire in the heart. Allah, the commandments of the decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also consider and mostly we can say consider the, the direction of the heart. If the direction of the heart of a person is towards the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes him towards it. If the direction of the heart is towards deen, towards Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasanu yassiruhu lil yusra. We'll make the things easier for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases out the ways for him to get close to Allah. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُهُولَنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, those who strive and struggle in getting us, in getting our pleasure and our reward. Who sacrifice their desires for us. We will open up the gateways of hidayah and guidance for them. Sabi is singular, means one path. Subul is plural of this, means it's not one path of guidance. Allah says, Subulana. I will open up the gateways and the paths of guidance to him. But the only condition is struggle. Only condition is jahadu fina. They struggle hard. They go against the desires of the nafs. They push the desires of the nafs aside and strictly follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, this step, this only step, once a person just treads the path of this uh, controlling and subjugating the nafs, the next step is into the Jannah. One, one step is to be on nafs. Second step is, it, is into the Jannah. Second step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives a person. Nuzulam min ghafoor rahim He'll find Allah the most forgiving, the most merciful. And he will be the host. Nuzulam min ghafoor rahim Our, your and mine host will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the only thing is that in this night, that's why we are supposed to do a lot of ibadah in, in, into this night. It's, it's asking a lot of dua for ourselves, for our friends, for our family members, for our neighbors, for our nearest and dearest. Making a lot of dua for everyone. Because this is this is the destiny changing night, life. This is a destiny changing uh, night. And the destiny changing life. If we, if we want that our life be changed in this night of change, then we have to get engaged in a lot of dua. We, 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 we have to focus on uh, that tremendously we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our forgiveness, for our guidance. Besides forgiveness, we need the guidance as well. Forgiveness for the past sins and guidance, guidance from now onwards so that we follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, uh, in letter and spirit, with full conviction, with zeal and zest. Uh, otherwise, my dear brothers and sisters, every year the night of destiny, Laylatul Qadr, will come and go, come and go, and we'll be, we will be all unchanged. And we'll be all just uh, like, a, uh, like, like the catalyst. We may be the source of the change for others, but on our part, there's no change. So, this Laylatul Qadr, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
so that we we don't celebrate it, we practice it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq to get the essence of Laylatul Qadr. And then we can see the power of this night. One of the meaning, as I said, is Laylatul Qadr is night of power. Then we can see the power of this night. It can change the, the destiny of a person. That's the power of this night. It can bring a it can bring a dignity and honor to a person. You see, when a person uh, abandons and avoids the, the, the wrong ways, before he was all scornfully looked upon. People would despise him. But when a person comes to the deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, what the, the instant reward is peace of mind, tranquility in the heart, and people begin to respect that person. So this, this is a night of honor. For whom this honor is? It's meant for the human beings. It's meant for this honor is meant for the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This night of power. Which power? Who is supposed to possess this power? This night of power. That this has a power. Whoever is blessed with this power of this, of this night is the most powerful on the planet. Means that the one who gets close to Allah, whose life is changed from bad deeds to good deeds, who travels now, who, who's, whose journey starts from disobedience to obedience. And Allah is with him. When Allah is with him, then he has got the all power. When powerful is with the person, however weaker that person is, this hardly matters. What matters? That the powerful is with him. If any country of the world, weakest country, say for, for example, the Israel is a dot on the globe. It's just dot. A few million people. But the whole, the, all the powerful countries are at the back. Which is all Muslim world cannot do anything. So when the, even however weaker a person is, if it is in the company of the most powerful, now here a person can realize the power. So this is a night of power, night of destiny. You now the destiny, I explained that, that in this night, our taqdeer, our al-qada, al-mu'allak is changed. It is subject to change, depending, up, depending up, up, upon our eagerness. And uh, this is the night in which uh, uncountable, innumerable angels descend down. And who will feel the barakah of these angels? The one who surely wants to be changed. Then definitely, wallah, he can feel the presence of the angels. It's not something, na'udhu billah, Quran is talking about something utopia, something speculative, something, something hypothetical. Quran says, this Prophet said, this Allah said, that angels are coming down. But did we ever try to feel the presence of these angels? Because we always take these teachings for someone else. Quran is for someone else. The teachings are for someone else. Okay, for me, I have to believe, I believe I'm a sinful guy and all this, blah, 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 blah. To absolve myself, to get to hardness the, the, the benefits of this night. But this night, inshallah, we all try our best to, to make this night as a destiny changing night for us. To get the true honor and dignity from Allah. To get connected to the most powerful in this whole universe, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therein we can also find, this is the night of restriction, that the hundreds, you know, the, the numbers I should not say, is innumerable, uncountable angels come down. And there are many hikmah, but why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down these malaika? Allah says in this surah, Tanazzalul malaika. The angels come down, they, this, they, are, they are sent down. Why do they come down? What is the hikmah behind it? We discuss it inshallah in our upcoming session and uh, some other important things regarding life of Qadr. Subhanallah wa hamdihi, subhanaka Allah wa hamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته